If you hear me speaking Luo, just forgive me. I'm a Luo. Hmm? Mother tongue first. Number one, Kenya Muzima, East Africa, Mambo ni hapa. Kila kitu ni tamu tamu, tamu tamu, tamu tamu zaidi. Today I don't have music and I'm not even in the mood. I'm sitting outside today, just waiting for an appointment. Hey, what is this? Huh? No, if you have nothing inside here except that. No, it's warm. It's warm today. I live I live in a village. I live in a huh? in a green environment with birds and bees. If I bring honey out here, you'll see a lot of bees coming. So I love nature. And uh, maybe I could just show you here there's even garage. You see? Don't mind the birds that are poo-pooing on my on my seat here, don't worry. That's garage, some things. Huh? What else can I show you? Just a minute. Let me show you some things here. Trees, 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 trees. Uh or the poyo is also there. A poyo to the poyo. Or the poyo. Uh rabbit's house, yes. I have some rabbits, so there's or the poyo there. What else? Some firewood for winter. When there's winter, there's firewood there for eh? yen mag moko match kako yongeki in the luo. And what else? Uh, here there's some small place for gazebo. And I'm sitting here. And the birds, these are kurus here. The doves like pooing on my chairs, so I'm tired of cleaning them all the time. But I'm sitting here, so yeah, green, 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 green. So sit to endele na maneno sasa. Okay, let me put back the camera here. So when I tell you I live in the bush because I'm tired of drama, I like my peace. I'm a very peaceful person. I love my peace. That's why I live away from uh, a lot of people. Or maybe I show you just a minute. Ooh, um, that's my entrance. And that is my house. That is my house, that is my house, that is my house. But that is the entrance and then uh, it's a big compound, it's very huge. Okay, I just... So, those who think Germany is just a big town, Germany is not a big town. Germany is also a village. Germany also has Dala. Germany also has trees. You know, when I was coming to Germany, I was thinking I'm going to a big city, like one big city. I thought there, there are no trees there, there are no Mayindis there, there are no... There's nothing like Africa here. I thought so. That's what I thought. Until I arrived though. Then I realized it's all the same. It's just that the waters, the oceans and the seas divided us. Otherwise we are on the same land. Right? It's just divided by waters. Cracked up to make, to form continents. Yani, Mimi, I can't just live with a lot of people around me. Huh? Because I have I have you online. I mostly exist online, and so when I'm out of Facebook or YouTube or whatever, I want my peace. I love being alone. I love, you know, just being myself. I don't like many people around me. Mm -mm. That is why I decided to live in a place that is just as peaceful as you see. I live with the trees. They are my best friends. The leaves. When winter comes, they fall off. We clean up here. It's a lot of work, but it's fun because it keeps me fit. It keeps it keeps me sane. It keeps me fresh. Yeah, it keeps me thankful and grateful. I just love my peace. Those who normally say that I should leave the kitchen and go somewhere else. See, now I'm somewhere else. Are you guys happy now? Eh? Are you guys happy now? Are you guys happy now? I am outside. I am outside. Mm -hmm. But the white kitchen is just there. Huh? Just there, 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 there. So guys, today, I just want to talk about something. Uh, in the last couple of months, I've been watching some lives on Instagram, which are actually very nice, very entertaining. Just makes you jolie. They're nice, they're nice. Uh, they're nice to listen to people like girls talking about their lives and uh, their struggles and their hustles really nice nice to listen to but there's something i noticed 
that all these girls who are on these lives they're out looking for zungus and they're looking for it's just about looking for a man who is rich looking for a mzungu looking for a millionaire looking for a billionaire yeah that's the conversation there and the people who are the the, the, the people who are involved in this are young people like not even over 50 or over 40 under 30 children under 30 ever since, since this ever since this um this COVID thing came in, this COVID club and all that, and uh, kids and girls, young girls seeing how much money you make twerking on the internet and what, it's just all about that. And I really pity, I really pity them. Okay, there are people who are talented who can twerk, that's no problem, you can do whatever you do, but you don't have to reduce yourself to, to just your whole life looking for um, see, a man to finance you. We all need money, of course, and everybody needs them, of, needs some extra money from someone. But as you, young people should not just think, like put their minds directly to wanting to live life with rich men, wanting to be taken care of completely without them doing anything except twerking their asses and dressing well. No, any others you understand? I don't know how to even to start this. I don't even know how to, to get the words together. I don't know. So it's been disturbing me a bit. Before I go far, I'm not despising those talks. I'm just bringing in my opinion or my advice from an experienced, um, you know, side of things. I'm talking about these kids. Kids, they have nothing. The money they get goes into their shoes, into their dresses, and they're being hurt out here, totally being hurt, just because they want to dress well, they want to change clothes on, inter on the internet and Instagram, and they're really being, like, convinced that this life, you can only get it, namzungu or a rich man or whatever, you cannot get it yourself. You guys, let me tell you something. Oh. If I had somebody who would have advised me before I came to Germany with these, all these things we advise you guys with, because me, my talks are normally trying to reach the youth, the younger people. And so if you are older than maybe 39 or, or older than 40 and you're listening, my wish is always that you pass that message forward to the younger ones. Because I know at 40 or uh, at 35, you are mature enough to decide what you want to do yourself. So my, my advice must not help you. But those younger people down there who look at us and think we live like queens and kings, who think that there's no struggle in this life, those are the ones I want to reach. Only those ones, those innocent souls, those ignorant souls, those are the ones I'm trying to reach. Those sisters of mine. Hmm? Eh, you guys, if somebody ever told me how life really is before I came to this Germany, I would have stuck to where I was. But, on the other hand, I'm very thankful that God held my hand and said, I'm not going to let you get lost in that life out there. You are there, I'm taking you there with another purpose. You're going to struggle, you're going to learn, but I have a mission for you. I want you to teach. I come from a family of teachers, I told you. Like half of my mother's brother, not even half. Uh, my, mother's, my mother had, all, had six brothers and four of them are all teachers. Herself, she's a teacher. My, 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 my environment where I grew up in was just teaching, teaching, teaching. I grew up in Nia. Nia is, a, is an education-oriented uh, community. There's nothing more than education in Nia, nothing else, nothing. There's just school, 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 nothing other than that. So that is why I'm more into teaching, teaching, teaching. When I was coming abroad, I was thinking, first of all, like I told you, Ukumaju, there's nothing like it. It's a big city. Yeah, it's a big city. There's no struggle. Things have already been made. Everything is gold. Everything is just diamond. Yani, I was coming maju. So that is why even I left all my things at home. Secondly, I was thinking Mzungu is, is, uh, Mzungu is Jesus. You know how we are told Mzungu is Jesus in those, our, our theaters that we, I mean, all those movies we watch in Kenya. Or the cinemas we used to do, watch in church. That is how. That is what it was in my mind. Exactly that was what was in my mind. Exactly that, because even our teachers at home in Kenya, they are not. They were not at that time. They were not so exposed. 
So you find a teacher even teaching you about longitudes and latitudes, but he himself doesn't even know about it, has never even seen it, doesn't even know if it exists really. He's just teaching you because it was on in schemes of work and syllabus. There's nothing. So a lot of things would have changed if we were to be able, well, we were able to see these things before we learned them. Or if our education system would have like revised what to teach us, at least things that you can see. You see, even on tours, when we went to tours in high school, yeah, or primary school, your mother and father will pay for, for you to go for tour. But what do you go to see? Even the things you're learning in school, you don't go see them. You're being taken to, to Coca-Cola bottlers to drink Coca-Cola. You're being taken to, I don't know, uh, Ketepa tea farm. There's really nothing you're learning from there. Nothing. Or you're being taken to a candy shop where people are making uh, candies, yeah? There's nothing you are learning. So you come here and you ca come out of school with your KCSE certificate you've passed, uh, but you don't know that you're still, your mind has nothing. You don't know nothing. Those who are better off are people who have at least traveled, people who have, people who move around. Somebody like me, I was not moving to nowhere. I was in Nia, I was going to school walking to school and back, walking to school. So there was not, not even any traveling I had experienced, no train traveling to Nairobi, nothing. Yani, I'm just learning from books, cramming, doing exams, passing or failing sometimes, and that is all I have. So coming abroad, I was mshamba, 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 100% mshamba. I didn't even know what, what the difference between a castle and a house. I didn't even know that every other country has their own architectural architectural styles, styles of building. Me, I knew only Kenyan style. Only Kenyan style is the, is the style that we have in the whole world. How I see our houses built in Kenya, that is how I thought the whole world has their houses. And what I knew Maju had was Gorofa. I knew if I go abroad, I'll see Gorofas. Any, now not hats, hat, hats and bungalows like we have them in Kenya. We have what? We have then abroad now Gorofa Gorofa. Hey! What are you doing Maju? My, I, I reached here at night. I reached here at night. In the morning when I woke up and went to the window to look outside, to see where I've landed in, I just, I just called home and said, I've woken up in castles. Because these guys, they built, like you see my house here, they, they have uh, roofs, I mean windows even on the roof. Let me just give you an example. Let me show you my, my house, Kidogo. You see, like the, who, who builds like this? This is even better. I wish I could go the other side here. I show you guys. Let me just walk to the other side. I show you Kidogo. I hope I won't mess up my video because of network. But there's something I want to show you. There's something I just want to show you Kidogo. Uh, though he is a bit different, but I wish I could show you the village houses like that one. There's a village house over there, but it's difficult. Like now, see here. How, I mean, a window on the roof. You see that? For me, that was like a castle. Yeah? Let me go back to where I was first. <laughs> hey, it's a struggle telling you these stories sometimes. It's a struggle. There, the kitchen is over there. But I'm not here to boast. My bad. I'm not here to boast. I'm just here to to teach, okay? I'm not here to brag or to what these things are gitu za dunia. Tutakufa tutawacha. Hata nikihamia Kenya, there's nothing I'll carry from here. So we just live life and leave the rest to God. So anyway, so I was thinking about those are castles cuz I'd never seen a castle before and I'd never had an opportunity to even like in details read a book with castles. So I was wondering, I've arrived in castles. I, this life was just oh. my expectation was too high. But when I got here, I realized I've just lost. I've lost my life. I've lost myself. And it's going to take time to find me again. I knew I was landing in depression straight away. I knew I was landing in uh, hell. Though it was looking glossy and nice. But waking up in a home where I was not used to. Waking up to foods I was not used to. Waking up to people I was not used to. And Mim Zungu with their, with their skin, their white skin, could not serve me food, especially chicken or something white, like even uh, potato cream, these things, anything whitish. You could not serve me. You could not serve me. I could not eat it. Mzungu alikuwa na cup for me kama gweno. Gweno mogo yege. Yani, kuku ile metolewa mabawa. That is how I looked at Mzungu. Yani, for me, Mzungu, where I'd come from, I'd not met Mzungu one-on-one. -on -one. Never. I'd never. 
the Mzungu that used to come to me and they were missionaries at the bishop's place. And they were, be, they were acting like, like strangers, like, like special. They were acting so special, so unreachable, so like from, they, they'd landed from the moon. So this was the first time I was, I was like getting into contact with Mzungu one on one. And my life had just changed with, a, with mixed feelings. I didn't know what to do. So anyway, then with time with time I realized, uh, the stories I've already gave, given you by the way, if you want to see how things went from when I arrived, check on my au pair story so I don't have to repeat myself, okay? Yeah? You know when you put a, chick, a, a chicken, chicken in hot water, then you remove that skin the way it, before you roast it. I swear that's how Mzungu looked for me. So I couldn't eat for a long time. I couldn't eat anything that is not dark. I couldn't eat anything that is not dark. I couldn't. Especially if they served for me. Ay, ay, ay. Mm -mm. I was just feeling frustrated. Ay. Hey, back I lost weight that time. You know, I came when I was mature, but then I lost weight. Then I started picking up again after get, after realizing that there's no more, there's no chance. I'm not going back home. Not going back home because I don't want to go, but because I am not welcome back home. That is the word. My, I unfortunately came from a place where nobody was ready to welcome me back home. I swear to you. And I'm not afraid to say that. Because if you come from a place where you could call, call home and say, I want to come back and they say, ah, take the next flight and come tomorrow. Then it's different. You know, you people who come from, from rich homes and from very, very close homes and from people who, who grew up together, people who want to, you know, they don't like the suffering of others. They want you to, to be together. You want th this thing that I'm trying to do now, to grow together with somebody, like you to, to feel for someone, to not just want to live life alone, but to hold someone's hand and to to have somebody's pain as your pain. To It's it's more fun. It's more fun to hold hands. But now this one, it was like, my room has been taken already. I've already given up my phone, give, given out my phone number, my I mean my telephone and my all my contacts. I left even my phone by the way. When I was coming Maju, I was told, or this is what I was hearing, that Maju, I don't have to carry anything of mine. Like what I carried was coffee, I carried Royco, I carried uh, these things that were Maju beba. But I didn't buy carry clothes. Maybe I carried a jacket, two jackets, because I was told Yuko kuna winter. So I bought some two jackets in uh, a chaka place and uh, I think one at chaka and one in toy and then my my blocks my boots this is you know what the blocks those ones high blocks those ones are the ones I bought I bought and wore traveling otherwise chochote. I left my clothes at home I left my everything I ever owned I left at home and I arrived here and started crying because I had no clothes I had no nothing. I can you have to zero. I was starting life from zero only with my passport, my certificates, and the clothes I came with. So I'm going to my Jew. Hey. Let's just leave that aside. So now, one thing I came knowing is that I was not a Mzungu type. Because in Kenya, at least while I was in Nairobi, I realized that at Simas, Simas in Nairobi and Tacos and uh, those areas where Wazungus normally hung, uh, did hang out those days. Yeah, the girls who are going to Simas were slim fit. You know, like in a Dorothy Oliech, those ka slims, those ka slim, those those two slim girls, those two slim girls, slim and dark. So that is what was in my mind. That Mzungu anapenda a tall black girl, tall slim black girl. So that is in, in me ni the Jewa story. Ya mzungu aiko kwa aiko kwa my diary at all. So just coming to work and then try to study, try to not try to study. I was coming to to do what I came to do and then go back to, to where I came from. That, that was my mission until I realized I can't go back. So I had to start to start finding another another way of thinking. So now, the other problem that I had, I didn't get the right friends when I came to Germany. I didn't get the right friends. The friends that nowadays I get, like I, I have a friend who now lives in Hanover, who is uh, a virologist, who is researching on coronavirus, a Kenyan, 31 years of age, researching on corona living good teach always calling me telling me about advising me about viruses and phd and masters i didn't have such friends i landed into the hands of friends who were seeing the only gateway as marriage the only other gateway is language school the best 
words they could speak that would uh, at least encourage your heart is to go and look for a language school. Apart from that, it was to get a boyfriend to marry you or get pregnant. So I landed on the wrong hands. But I had to work with that to find myself. If I ever found somebody who told me, do this, do this, go to apply to England, go to PhD, do, do PhD, you can do masters, you can get scholarship, you can get, I don't know, all these things this girl is now telling me nowadays. You know, I, I, I would have been much, I would have not been sitting here now telling you stories, but maybe I don't blame God. Maybe I'm still alive, so my future is still bright. I could still get to that one day. But until then, God has given me life. God has given me a nice space. God has given me internet and why, I mean, internet and a camera. God has given me a mouth to speak and a voice to speak. I am healthy and sound, so I can talk to you. So I am thankful to you, O Lord. I'm not complaining. But I'm not li limiting myself. I'm not like putting myself in a box. I'm not satisfied. I just want to grow. Yeah? Grow, but grow with you guys as I teach you. So don't think me. I just want to stay on the internet. Uh -uh. I'll be on the internet because the internet is there. This is the degeneration. But I want to be up there. I want to go to, you know, to do PhD, masters, to be like these girls who I, who I now have as friends. Because even my own sister Pauline, yeah, when she got to get the right friends that now we have together, she went to study. She stopped uh, dancing with me in the kitchen. So you see nowadays she's studying, she's working, she's going to be a doctor very soon, you know. She's struggling. She's, it will take some years, but she'll get there. And that is the right way. So when you ask me about her, uh, I always tell you she's, al she's alive and kicking, she's there, but she's, she found, you know, she, through these videos we were doing here, she got friends who use their minds and advised her to do this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And, this. and she grew and she's now, as we speak even now, she's in uh, college in the morning. She went by six. So she does college three days, she does uh, work two days, just like that. And weekends also she works. You know, so those are the kind of friends I wished for when I came to Germany. But I landed in pregnancy hands. I landed in Jiweke Kogazeti hands. I landed in go to clubs hands. I landed in this. Yet me, even as you see me dancing in, in, the, in the kitchen, that is my disco. I never go out. I am not an out dancer. Unless I'm in Kenya, where I know now I'm on holiday, and somebody asks me, let's go, like, I sponsor you for a drink, or we go listen to live band. I love live band. I don't like wallow wallows, I like live band. And that is the only thing I used to visit when I was in Kenya, which is Musa Juma's live bands. That is where I used to go. Otherwise, nothing else. So if you see me dancing in the kitchen, don't think, don't think I, I am an outgoing person. I, I, I'm so indoor. I'm an indoor person. I like my home office. I like being alone. I just love, I can't waste my sleep in a club. Oh no, I can't. I love sleeping because I wake up on time, I wake up by 5, latest 5.30. I sleep late, but I sleep. And once a week, I take a whole afternoon from like, let me say 1.30 or 2, until 5, I just sleep completely. That's what I do once a week. So, that is me. Now, um, after my, those au pairs and everything, after those, we only fast forward, yeah? Eh. I said realizing what life is uh, through those my married friends, through my pregnant friends, through all this. Now na vile wazungu wana treat watu. Kwanza if you don't have papers, like mzungu akikuleta, amekuleta, like mzungu brings you, brings you from Mombasa or from Kenya or wherever, or takes you, you know some people come for a pair and then they, they break it halfway. Maybe two months, three months, they have already boyfriends because they, you know, they are those types of, the ones who don't struggle. They get boyfriends so fast. Hey, once you land in their house, I tell you, and they know you fully depend on them. Hey, that is when you know fire is fire. They'll start emotionally abusing you. Like, you'll be, to, you, you know, they can go out, they can even bring you another woman in the house. They can... Im go back to their excess and if you try to talk they'll be like yeah but you're here because of me eh? so your papers are all because of me you are ma you are living here because i married you i can spoil your visa eh? yani if you get don't think that our those ones who are married to wazungus here they are living high life 24 hours the frustrations they go through 
love in a kwa love when you are still dating on the internet when you're still dating when you're still dating when you are you are an individual and he's an individual you are surviving on your own money and he's surviving on, surviving on his own, own money that is when the love is sweet once you get to their houses you move into their houses and you are in a foreign land live alone kenya you know if you're in kenya you can run you can say ah this is my home anyway i can also do what i want to do you can just leave him or you can do whatever you want to do or you know what people do you can do but now in a foreign land you don't have a, 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 tic, a ticket to fly back home your people know you are maju and they are proud of you they are boasting about you that you are abroad you are in england you're in america you are in germany there's there's no way you can this you can say you want to go back home they won't allow you they won't allow you and you here you have landed in Namzungu's house. Maybe he has children. His children are, hate you because you know some of us, you can be loved and loved, but if you don't love the children of that person, you're in shit. A warning to you people who are looking for, 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 for Wazungus to marry. If your Mzungu has children, start with the children. Make sure you are in love with those children and they're in love with you first before you move into their house. Because if you dare move into their house because their father loves you and you don't love them, Hey, you will, you will curse the day you were born. They will frustrate you. And their mother, their mother, the, the ex of, of that your husband, the, the ex of that's your boyfriend, the ex of your fiancé, fianc hey, he will, she will use those kids to frustrate you. Because you, the kids will be going to her every two weeks. That is what, what happens in Germany, for example, if families are divorced or if they are uh, separated. So every two weeks or every second weekend, the children go to to the person who has no custody over them so maybe the father can be having the uh, uh, the father who is living with you could be having custody over them so you, they live with you or their mother and if their mother has custody so you're living with their, with their father alone they'll be coming every weekend or every two weeks or over holidays and if you try to give them mother out they will be giving mother out they eat they leave everything on the table they can even walk into your house with my topa if they want they can switch off tv and internet if they want for you they can make party and like s do whatever they want in your house and you won't say a thing and if you try to say a thing they start frustrating their father because they know their father is disparate for them they know their father is disparate for them so they will try to mess up their father's life they will like threaten him that they're going to tell the, the, uh, the children's court the uh, the children's department they will you know, their mother will use this against their father. You will be suffering. Like, where when you the center of emotional abuse here. And there's one thing that Amzungu cannot do. Amzungu, even if they love you to death, they love you mbaka ile, they can never, um, like, turn their back on their families to, to defend you. When it comes to fire and fire, they'll stay with their, with their families. They'll be on their daughter's side, on their son's side. They'll be on their, even their ex-wife's side, and not on your side. So if you have not been married by that time, hey, you better start running. But where do you run to? If maybe your visa's already expired, yeah, you are with him there. From home, you're, you're calling home, they are telling, they are just, if, you know, if they're not asking you for money, then they are uh, encouraging you to stay there. Yeah, so you can't know Mzungu, just stay with that Mzungu. You know that Mzungu promised to buy us a house. That Mzungu, you know, is, you, he can change our lives. Change our lives. And you, you are the sacrifice. You are the sacrifice where you are. Whatever you are going through to even them getting that money, they don't know. I tell you, if Mzungu Akitaka Kuku rape, like literally rape you, he's, he, you know, he has in his mind or he's uh, protecting his acts with the fact that he wants to marry you or you want his papers or whatever. And he knows very well he cannot make you pregnant because most of Wazungus here, in Germany most, mostly, they are very careful about about uh, their their sperm cells they're very 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 careful they know how it's how expensive it is to take care of kids here abroad it's very expensive in germany if you make a, a, a woman pregnant straight away they start dealing with your account because once the baby is born you your money will be taken direct direct from your account to be paid for that kid you will pay you will pay you will pay back a one and those are these wazungus wanajua they know very well in their minds they know so they also know when a woman just wants to have to, to to have a baby with them they know when you're disparate and that is the time they will use you they will be turning you up and you unampea 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 vile you see those girls who do lives on on, on instagram talking say 
he will be giving you even bringing other men to his house for you to to like do sex with like forced sex with you you are there oh you're there oh i'm going to be married i'm going to get papers i'm going to stay in germany i'm going to be a citizen kumbe you are going to be used by the time you realize then that is when you hear on news that somebody has jumped in the sea and died, somebody has uh, committed suicide, somebody has this, somebody has become mad, somebody is drinking, somebody has become a drug addict. That is how it happens. Hmm? You, you wake up in the morning, you see her on the internet, you see her dressed well, sweet, doing road trip, and you don't know what she's going through when the lights go off. And I used, I used, I most of these wazungus, they are sex addicts, like Total, literally sex addicts addicts and mostly those ones who know that they they are not going to have any uh, you know responsibilities to take they're not going to get to bring walisha kata makende kitambo sana au ndo takutumia ana kutumia sasa na kupatia love ana kupatia love time yako zinaenda si najua najua when your visa when your visa expires he knows very well when your visa expires because you already love him and you're desperate. So you've told him everything. You told him, you know what? I only have three months to go. I have only five months to go. I came as an au pair and now I want to be. And I jua vizuri sana. Ata kuwa na kusongeja time. Wa uko in love, you are concentrated on making him happy. Because somebody told you that if you like lie down or bend low to them and, and you lick their asses, then they're going to make you citizens of this country. Hey. They'll enjoy and enjoy and enjoy. By the time you realize. Me was an, when I was a pair, I kumbuka in here in Hamburg. I I heard of a, a girl, not even heard, I like I almost witnessed. I just didn't go to see. But I, it it happened in a place called Bambek. A lady just called and the kali jua amali uliwa amali collapsed and died on the stairs kwa kuza kwenda kwa nyumba boyfriend yake the guy had been using her using her using her so when the time came for her to get married alienda kwa nyumba wa mtu akapata mtu amefunga mlango and her things were outside like imebaki like just one week or few days na her visa is expired she was an au pair she died on the stairs i don't know how she died but she died on the stairs so if you don't find good friends to advise you accordingly, you're just rolling with with uh, with uh, current. You're just thinking Maju is about pointy children. Let me tell you something also about pointy children. Hey, I let me just warn you, not in a bad pro pointy. This this half cuts cuts kids that most of us have here abroad. They're so beautiful. They're the most beautiful children in the whole world. They are cute. They have beautiful hair. They what? But let me tell you something, my sister. They don't have, uh, they don't have uh, an, a, 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 a strong identity. They are, they are like watermelon. They are watermelon. You know, if you are white and you have a white kid completely, you are okay. When you are black and you have a black child, you are very fine. If you are black and you have a child who is a half caste, the father is white. You, you are black. The, his white family doesn't want to, to identify with that child because they're saying that child is black. When you go with that child at home, the, the kids at home are calling her Mzungu. So the child has no identity. This child can never survive in Kenya like, or in Africa, like naturally. They have to struggle so much in future even they are grown, when they grow now. They have to struggle to really find their, to, like, set their feet in the, that home because you might find a man to marry you when you go back home. Who will take this pointy? The only advantage you have is that pointy will stay, at least uh, she or he has two homes, abroad and in Kenya with you. So when he feels like, or she feels like she's, uh, she has identity crisis, or she has no home, or she's, she's not accepted, she can run back to where she came from. But where she came from also, she's totally being seen as a black. And black abroad is a scene. Black abroad is a scene, like we cannot cover that. It is a struggle. We struggle with this racism every day. It's not going to end any sooner. Ni kuweka tu kichwa ngumu na kusurvive tu na kujieka tu meno ngumu. But living abroad as a black person, living among white people as a black person is never easy and will never be easy. So we imagine you, you have a home, you as a mother, you have a home back at home in Kenya like me. I can run back home and in this my home, I don't have to go to my home in Nia. I can go to any part of Kenya, even Kikuyuni Uko, even Nyeri, even Muranga, even Kisi and still be able to integrate myself and nobody will even know I'm a Luo. I can still feel home. Mzungu yo mtu wa mzungu yo pointi wako. 
akikuja nyumbani kila mtu ndio huyo anamwangalia we just look at Tanasha Dona look at uh, Eric Omondi's girlfriend look at uh, nani look at uh, Sauti Sol Bien's uh, wife look at their struggles they are beautiful they are the most beautiful kids on earth but they are always recognizable they can't just melt into us they are struggling even their parents back at home they are just crying for them these kids are they are struggling they are struggling because they just don't have that root. They don't have that, that identity on their skin. That is why I actually always admire these Ghanaians and Nigerians and Kenyans who come abroad and still give birth to black children, like 100% black. Because huku watachekelewa na wale watu wa pointees, you know? The pointee mothers. They'll be like, oh, we are black. We are black. Huh? Coming maju and then giving birth to a black. But you know what? At the end of the day, when we retire and go back home, that black child of that your sister, Kenyan sister, will be the one who will survive. Will, they, will be the one who will have it easy. You will be staying at home. Like me, I'll be staying home there. And I'm worried about my children. You are worried about your children because your children have no home, nowhere, not even with you. So let us think twice sometimes. Let us remove this stereotype, this thinking of that it is not a must. It is a struggle for them also. It is punishing them also. This race has not yet gotten its home. Not yet. I swear to you. I'm talking to you from experience. I know what I'm talking about. This race hasn't gotten their root yet. They haven't gotten their root. They're still, like in Obama, they are still struggling. Look at the way Obama was the president of, of America. Born in America. But he's just being pushed left and right. Well, America was a Kenyan. Kenyans were a America. Yani slap, slap, slap. But look at her sister, Auma Obama. Look at her, I mean, his sister, Auma Obama. Look at his brother, Malik. No matter how Malik is talking trash and balderdash and speaking badly about him, he is stable. He has a home in Kenya. He is, you know, he is most, most welcome at home than Obama. He feels more comfortable there than Obama. If the world would just go back to traditional, those days when there were no, no mixed kids, that Malik would be would survive more than Obama. It's now that it's just the world has changed now, and uh, we are more tolerant, and uh, there's space for everybody. That is why you can see that you can see that uh, that uh, now in Obama, who they, are, they, are, they have homes, they can survive, they have they, you can buy a home and build. But the struggles of those kids, the, only the people who are close to them can 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 see. The people who open their eyes and face reality, ignorant people and people who don't want to like. Uh, see the reality you know there are some people who who, who have a problem with uh, accepting realities that they work with the reality you you don't you want to find excuses find excuses and then you make even things worse there's nothing as bad as you are half half like half blood 50 50 and somebody is always telling you you're a black you cannot identify with your father or your mother if he's white why are they not called whites why are they always called blacks is it the only is it the, the, the black person who, who who had sex herself and got this baby? Why can't they just be as white as they are as black? Why? And do you, you, you want to tell me here what 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 what? That, just that or that reality already that fact already that they cannot be identified as white as the other parent is already a problem for them, not even for you because you'll run away and go home. It is a problem for them. It starts right out, right from birth. So hapo, always in a challenge. I know what I'm saying. And that is why, as Terry, and as I stand up for my words, I will encourage our sisters and brothers to not worship the white skin so much. To cherish themselves. Even if you're dating a white man, and he doesn't want to get, make you pregnant, don't force it. Don't go like putting those seeds, those seeds that nowadays people plant in their stomachs to have a pointy child. If he can't give birth and he loves you, I mean, if he can't make you pregnant and he loves you, then get black cells. Because at the, at the end of the day, when you give birth to a child, it will be black. Accept yourself, love yourself. I wish somebody told me these things long time ago. That is what I'm trying to tell you. I'm teaching you things that people didn't teach some of us. If you have a black brother that you love, you better get pre pregnant with your black brother. There's no child out here, no pointy out here that is not loved. Especially our Kenyan ones. There is none that is not loved. They are loved because they are beautiful, first of all. They are just loved. But I'm talking about the realities of their own pains. 
sit with them down and ask them how they feel when they go to school, how they feel when they go to cinemas, how they feel when people are discussing their, their skin, how they feel, they feel when they're told they're black and they're not white. How do you feel if you're part of your family, a part of your blood, your parents, is being forced out of you by force, by people who are strangers? How do you feel? That is what I'm trying to ask. How do you feel when somebody is putting judgment on you when you have nothing, you can do nothing about it and you love yourself the way you are and that you're actually the most beautiful person in the world? How? It's different when you're in countries like Brazil because most Brazilians are half caste. So they, have, they don't have this identity crisis. But I'm talking about these ones that we mix here in Europe. Europe, America, England, where, and between, you know, between a real black country and a real white country. Between real black skin and white skin. That is what I'm talking about. I'm just trying to bring in, you know, us to think deeper. Because many people, so that's many people, they roll with, uh, with what they see. Yani they don't really sit back to think for themselves. The Bible says, think for yourself and make judgments for yourself. Think deep. And also, when you've already thought, thought deep and learned something, remind them, even if they don't, even if they know, just remind them. Share. Sharing is caring. And that is why I said as I began this thing that I'm talking to young girls who have not yet gotten to where we've gotten to. That is under 30s, under 30s, under 25s. Those fresh kids who are still just enjoying life, even if they're not virgins, they're just still having fun. Just, we're just helping them with thinking. We're just helping them with future, I mean, decisions for their future. That is what I'm telling them. Mzungu is not everything. Just like a black man is not everything. But the decisions you make, the choices you make, they define and they determine and they control your future. And they control the future of everybody that is involved with you then. Everybody that comes from your bloodstream will suffer what you, what, you know, the mis your mistakes. God says, I'm a jealous God. I am a jealous God and I, pun I punish generations. The mistakes your ancestors did. I will punish those, those mistakes into generations and generations. So some, some things we go through now, our ancestors did wrong. But nevertheless, it is you who is being, you are carrying that thing as an individual. Like, like, you will not go back and tell your mother, oh, mama, I'm suffering because of you, no? Because even her, she's suffering. Even her, she has gone and through it. Even her, she's carrying her own salaba. So whatever you do with them, with your parents and grandparents and wherever, is out of a good heart. It's out of you. Know that it's a choice you're making yourself. But don't be like, like forced to carry somebody's burden because in God's eyes, you are the same. In God's eyes, you and your mother, your sisters. You are his children. Punishment ni akila moja wao. Live for you and think for you and learn from the from the, the, the you know the elders mistakes learn so that you may try to make the, the younger generation live a better life you know let's make the world better that is what i'm trying to say somebody will tell you god created us in his own image god himself is a spirit god is a spirit he came even jesus came into this world he had to take a form of a human being for us to to to, to be serious with him Otherwise, he would have remained as a spirit. We, don't, we would have not taken him serious if he, to, if he just remained to hovering around like a spirit. I took him too serious. He had to like come into somebody's body, walk around like you, yet you, if you don't think deep, you're thinking, ah, Jesus was just a man like us. Jesus was just everybody. Jesus was not everybody. Jesus is a spirit, a wind that you don't even, you only feel it in your soul. He on, they only take forms of human beings so that you, to, to convince you of something. But once they leave those bodies, those bodies are nothing. They are done with. There's no, the body of Jesus, the way it died, it died and went. His spirit left and went back to be the spirit that it was. So if you can't think for yourself, I'm just trying to share what I can share before I die. One day, I don't want someone to say she knew and she didn't tell us. I'll tell you. So like I was saying, what's on way to my younger sisters and brothers out there? I take this opportunity, this blessing of being alive today to tell you that first of all, live your life to the maximum. Enjoy your life to the maximum. So many, if you can go to school, go to school. You don't have to get pregnant before you get to 35. Like people tell you, oh, if you get pregnant at 35, before 35, I mean, after 35, you'll be old, you'll be what? Achana now. If you 
want to get pregnant before you reach 35 or after 35 or whatever. It is your own self. Get pregnant, get your baby, or not get your baby, or stay the way you are according to how you feel. You don't have to procreate. You don't have to. After all, this world today is full of so much evil. The, the more children you bring in this world, the more you are giving them burden. You know the feeling of bringing a child into punishment? You, you get me? I don't know whether you get me. You know the feeling of creating another human being into punishment? You give birth to your child. When they're kids, they're so sweet. Honey pie, mwah, ay, you, mwah, mwah, ay, so sweet. The way you carry them, pampas. It's just cute, like a doll, like a living doll. So cute. Everybody wants that. You get those hormones, you just want a baby. What you don't realize, what we are not told here, Maju, when we are being told to get pregnant is, there's hospital and the bills. There's winter where you have to, to drive this kid or walk with this kid to those hospitals for clinics. Apart from that, there's something called kindergarten there's clothes and food i tell you when you're living alone you can stay hungry the way you want you can you can just take tea and bread you can just take juice you can just it's different you can take your phone and do youtube videos and do makeup and do wherever hey once you have a baby you cannot press delete you cannot press delete once you have a baby you will not press delete I tell you responsibility, Galo. Responsibility. You are, you are responsible for a life. And this life is not here for a day. This life is not here for two days. This life is not here for one month. This life may be here for eight years. It depends on, on God <laughs> and your soul. <laughs> school is coming, sweetie. This school that is coming, hey, even if it is free education like Germany, you will have to buy books. You will have to go to see what tests. You will have to buy uniform. You will have to do this. You will have to go for parents' meetings. You will have to, to, to pay for I don't know which journeys out there. You will have to... to hey. This, this crankhead, not crankhead, this, this diseases that come with winds and these viruses that come in school, you will have to deal with them when they bring them at home. When they come home, every day lunchtime, dinner, you are thinking of what your child will eat. If you don't have a job and have a, don't have somebody supportive who support you, you have you have to prepare a meal on a daily basis. Whether you like it or not, you have to feed your child. Especially up Maju. You know in Kenya it's much easier. Kenya you can give up to 20 children because you have your parents there. You have your cousins who are desperate to come to the city to live with you. You have poor people out there. You have mama kuashanguo. You have maids. You have people who are, who are living under poverty lane that can help you that you can give pain, petty cash and can help you abroad in the diaspora hapa mali mnataka kuja uzunguni utakuja uzunguni utapendwa kupendwa ukishaza after baby shower mtoto akuje nje hapo ndo mzungu anataka kwanza kutoroka that is when your mzungu is on business trip hey you start from there the cold you are afraid of you know the way we, we Kenyans come abroad and then it's cold it's cold you don't want to go out on winter <laughs> We don't have to a clinic. You have to take your child is sick, your child is coughing, your child has what? Your child has bronchitis. You have to do all that. And then, uh, apart from that, if you have like, uh, if you like, you you have no no visa. Maybe your mzungu left you, or maybe you you gave birth with somebody who has no papers in Germany or abroad here. Then the visa you are on is the visa your child will get. Don't think when you give birth here, like here in Europe, Sarasana, Upper Germany, that uh, your child will be automatically uh, a citizen here. I think, yeah. Naskenga uko anakula pesa ya toto, ji uko anapatio pesa ya mama. Hey, hey. Money is not everything. Money is not everything. Pesa ya mtoto hiko ndiyo. Tena inakuja sana sana. Na yo pesa ya mtoto. Wanaileta wakijua the prices of clothes. When I let her kijua mtoto anataka toys. When I let her kijua mtoto anataka bed na mattress na na na, na duvet. Wanajua wana 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 the prices of things in the supermarket. Hakuna enjoyment una enjoy na pesa ya mtoto. Hiyo mtoto pesa ya mtoto ni ya kukusaidia ku, you know, ya ku take care of that child na lakini you have to you have to ongeza your own money juu. Haitoshi. The government is just trying to support you because this is a child of their of their country and they are trying to to also maintain their their population. Because a long time ago, like in Germany, people were not like giving birth. They were giving birth to only one child, like China. 
most of even families are not giving but they prefer dogs because dogs are not growing so much they'll reach some age and then they still remain small and then they are i don't know how old you just take them out to poo poo they back around and that's it or a cat easy to deal with and then you go and do your career hey hapa umefika hapa ndio mzungu anakuambia at even if you are working by the way maybe he he got you working so he loved you because you are working maybe you're even working in his office hey you give back like this he starts telling you one of us must get the money one of us must feed the family you're saying, Mom, sweetie, but also me, I was working. I have degrees. I came from Kenya with this degree. I have a half master's and PhD. Hey, I'm going PhD. I'm going to Hey, hey, one of us must work. It's me who has, the man has to work. Hey? This is my country. Hey? After all, you, your baby is depending on me. Now it's your baby. Especially when the kid is still small, like small, 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 when crying at night. Hey, that is when you know Mzungu Nani. When they have grown, they started talking again, they're riding bicycles. Now again, that is their child. They'll get back to being their child again. When they start riding bicycles around and starting to, to, to know what is happening and asking where he's going, when he's going, they start, hey, that is when you'll, you'll know that, that they, they are in love with their children. And this love with their children, hey, government, now he wants to, to get rid of you and, and have his children. Because he knows now the kids, you've already struggled with your children. Your children are now uh, independent. They can shower alone. They can dress alone. They can go to school alone. They can do a thing alone. Now he wants to get rid of you. He's already gotten another human being somewhere. He wants to marry or, or, or sex with around. But he doesn't want to, leave, to lose his children. Because if he loses his children to you, then he's going to pay a lot of money to you. Like it is here in Germany. This is why uh, like couples struggle when it comes to child custody. Because the father or the working parent, mostly fathers, mostly the, that mzungu, doesn't want to pay that custody. They don't want to. Because they're forced, they just have to be forced to. And then divorce also. Nowadays there is this issue of uh, divorcing, I mean marrying with contract. Because those kitambo, there was no contract. So people just marry. And when divorce comes, atakama any foreigner, you get 50-50 of the things he has. And maybe he's, he has been struggling all his life to get those things he got. Yeah? So it becomes hell. So he's struggling to get custody because the person who remains with the kids remains with everything. You, you, you go alone. So hapo ndo kuna kwanga na war. Hapo ndo kuna mzungu wa mshutu mtu. Hame kushutu kwa zanajua anyway. When you were living with him, your parents didn't really care much about you. Your sisters didn't care much about you. They cared about your money. They cared about the mzungu who is sending you money. So he knows, or he has already studied you. He knows you have no backup. He knows you have no love, no real love back at home. You've told him the struggles at home. You've told him how you poor you are. You've told him how you have no house. You've told him all those things. And he has them. He has written them down. He is waiting to, to attack you with all those things you're telling him. Watch atu. Saile divorce in India. That is when utajua, utajua tamamaka kupendi. Hapo utajua. Mzungu alikusoma kama kitabu. Mzungu aliandika. Now and then they are direct everything. Ile siku me fight anandika chini. We ujui hizo. Ile siku ali, ali, ulikuja late nyumbani anandika chini. Date time na everything. Ata nachukua ata, ata, ata voice call. You, you don't know. You, so you are in love, you are majuu, you pata mzungu. Umeka. Kujuu mzungu akona file na, ma, na maisha yako. Yet you are his wife or his girlfriend. Mzungu akona file na wewe. The day you want to take, unataka kumonesha ati, unataka kumonesha ati, wendu unajua life. Utapata mkufungulia file hivi. Date, time, even didn't really happen 1932. Na saimu kwa 2020. Akona details. Baka picha, amekupiga. Who is the win court case? You will not win any court case with him. What, what comes next? You call home, then they're hacking away. You know, all neighbors know that we are, you're married to the Mzungu. And the way you, you've come home already with the Mzungu. Asa wala likuja for the party. Wale uliwaita for the wedding. Wale watasikia ni aje na sisi. So where does a girl go? A girl dies in their stress. A girl dies in depression. Girls are depressed here. Girls are depressed here. You see girls smiling, smiling on the internet. Especially I noticed even on YouTube. We have a lot of girls in Germany who are doing YouTube now. But they are, they are smiling, yet they are doing that YouTube to run away from something. I'm talking because I saw a girl yesterday crying so bitterly. I tried to watch that video. There's nothing she told us on that video. But she was crying so bitterly on the video. The whole video was just about her crying. And then she told us that she's going to tell us in the next video what happened. Only to realize this girl is depressed. So, anajaribu kufunika kila kitu. Unajua the pressures on the internet, the pressures of her sisters, the pressures of her friends. She's trying to, to keep up with those lifestyles. Usiyo tiaweza naeza, but situation yake imwalao. So, inafika point, anatuane breakdown. Hi guys.
so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm always happy. <laughs> when I do videos, it's true. I'm always happy because I have joy at that time. I'm happy. I don't think that I'm happy. That's why I'm always happy on my videos. No more. I hope that I will be back to no more. I hope so. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't know one want to see this video, me crying, whoever knows me, <sighs> knows me as, a, as such a loving and uh, lively girl and uh, yeah, things are normal, so why should I laugh? And uh, the reason why I've done this video, of course, is to tell you in the next days or weeks. I don't know, maybe days, maybe the weeks. I will not be able to to, to be on YouTube. Yani, nini mko huo mna damia ati nini ni? Ai, ana yo life apa? Ako kwa nyumba baka na balcony. Lakini analia uko ndani 24/7. We have people here who who are hungry. Mzungu ati mko na mzungu. Mzungu mi mwacha njia. Mzungu sana mi nyanya mtoto. Mzungu anamchochea unachochewa na shinda amepigia maybe in Uganda mtu ni 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 child 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 department child child wala anachugulikia watu watoto watoto ana shinda ame nini chochochea huko na anaambia Uganda vile sio wako wapi vile sio anachapa mtoto kwa nyumba ni vile sio anafanya nini vile sio anapika ugali instead of kupika rice vile nini kuchochea tu yeye anajaribu kwa love in love na huyo mtu for your sake for your home sake and for the fact that anajua Papers zake as Jaiva, maybe liza last year, ama liza two years ago, lakini, kuna vile japata German passport. Hajapata German passport, ama ata ana ile unda free state, ile permanent residence ana. Ana survive on visa, maybe three years, three years, kuza kumarid. Aki kumbuka kuruli nyumbani, hana anything, alishaya nda nyumana kafanya wedding, alishaya nda nyumana, alishaya nda parents waka ya kujama jua karinga ringa, watu ushagua na jua kwa sawa, watu wajua wana respect mamake na babake, mamake na babake ya chairmans in a lot of organizations at home church au ndo chairman oh sako gani au ndo chairman sababu kwa majuu yeye hana survive on visa watu wanamjudge from nyumbani akona mtoto so ah si akona mtoto that means akona akona german passport si akona mtoto that means she's she's living a good life hey ujue mtoto ni punishment sasa hizo life yake ime stop haizienda ta job haizienda ta nini haizienda ta maybe party how is he travel home? Because first of all, I can travel home. Traveling home, you have to carry what? You have to, to, to pay for two people. Ama kamu kuna three kids, you have to buy a ticket for three people. Before you buy that ticket, like say now Corona time, we have like ticket in a cost almost a thousand euros. Uwe mwenye ufanyi kazi. Mwenda kuenda nyumbani. Mzunga na kuambia, ukenda nyumbani, bebala na mtu wako wende nae. I have no time, I have to work, I can't take care of the kid. Now, mtoto alipa full fare. You are already 2,000 euros. Ama ata kama ni half fare, ni 1,000 something euros. Na ata kama mtu ni baby, 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 sweet, sweet, darling, ule bado mnyangu, mdogo alipi fare, alipi air ticket. Ukwena nae Kenya, unafaku mpatia siju malaria coverage, insurance, uyani ukwena mtu, ukwena mzigo, auko peke yako. Ukwena mzigo. Ukifika uko home, watu home wana jume toka majua, watu kapesa, awa fikiri mtuto wako, awa fikiri umekuja na mzigo hapa. Umekuja na watoto, because most of us hapa pia wakuna watu more than, more than one, more than two. Because, Uki give birth, wengine wata kuambia ti, oh, you know, yaki ya mungu mtuwa mmoja na ni kazi ngumu, you give birth to two. They'll always be playing together. You know, people always convince you of getting another baby. When you get that baby, you remain with your baby alone. Now you have two babies who are supposed to be playing together, and they are young, they cannot play with one another. And there's no way you're going to work, there's no way you're going to go to work with two kids. Secondly, your husband, amesha choka, like I told you. So now you want to go home to your mother with these two kids. Mamako huko nyumbana asma, ah, yaki hile ni, hile nyumbo lisema tukujenge, pesa ilipata kazi ngine. So now you've been thinking you are building some kakeja home through your mom or your dad. Kube them, they knew kumaju, they always say that we think, you know, you call them and then you talk with them, you plan with them how you want to build this and this and this. When you finish talking and they lay down, I mean, they lay off the phone. Then they start saying, talking to themselves and the people who are at home, Ah, wanafikiria, wanafikiria nga kama wajirumani. Wanafikiria kama watu wakumaju. These girls are always thinking, or that daughter of mine always thinks that, uh, that hapa, hapa nyumbani ni maju. 
So all the things you've discussed with your parents or with your brother to do for you, they change them because they feel like you are you having a mindset here wa Jerumani. You are having a mindset ya uko maju. They don't know you are very serious about what you're, you're saying because you have experienced life already and you know exactly what you want. How? How funny. So you get home, how not anything. And if you have that structure that they've made for you, the way you wanted it, there's no bedroom in it, there's no steamer, unanila kwa floor, and you have a child. So it's a burden, a burden that you're not ready for. Maybe you're not even mature in your head. You, like the girls who come here for a pair, they're very young because they're between 18 and 24. So an 18 and 24 year old is a kid. Yani ndametoka high school, yani university, university level, yani undergraduate level, a baby. They are just, they have not taken experience life. They've been living with their parents. They are just from their parents' house to here. So even if you're 24 or 25, but you've come direct from your mother's house, there's no way you are a big person. You are a child because age will not make you big. Now you come here, somebody tells you to get pregnant. You've not lived life at all. Ata ile adolescent ijaisha kwa mwili yako. Your body is still developing. Somebody wants you to have a child. And then tells you to have another child. Or you get twins. Your life is ended there. You've not gone to school. You finished from four, you've, you've finished like that. Ama you came after you've done maybe a degree. These uh, two degrees to a Kenya, easy to a polytechnic. Eh? Utu two degrees wa sikuizi zi mob mob. These are taos or colleges. It will, it's getting you nowhere. Because here, for you to study, you have to like... You, when, do you, when do you translate your certificates secondly you have to go and uh, there's a lot to do before you start studying then you start being a house housewife you start being a housewife you yourself you've never learned to be a housewife your mother was never a housewife because in kenya parents who, who can afford even to take their children maju are parents who are working so you are in the house maybe you don't need the maid now you're coming here there is no maid there is no maid sweetie there's no maid Remember even me, I was a maid in Germany. What an expensive maid I was. Who can afford such a maid like me? Mzungu mwenye akona kazi, akona their own business, akona home like this, akona pool, akona nini ganeza ni afford. Not that I am expensive, no. I was just too useless. But taking care of a foreigner as your maid in the house is not easy. Because here we have something called human rights and it's serious. Here there are rules and regulations. Here there is... Uh, uh, what limit to what you're paid like there's some kind of money you cannot earn less the money i was getting was called pocket money in germany it was not salary because i was living like i'm a part of the family that is how the rule is so when i came i was being given 206 euros that is 20,600 20,600 it is zero here it is nothing it's like the value of 20,000 20, Kenyan shillings in Germany when I came was 200 shillings. Or let me say 2,000. 2,000. Let me say 2,000. What 2,000 shillings can buy you in Kenya? That is what 200 euros can buy you here in Europe. Maybe fair to a car and back at home. Na kurudi. Kwa uba. That is how it is also here. So me earning that money, 20,000, was zero for me. Yani nothing. Sina kitu. Lakini mtu nyumbani mwambie kwa simu na an 20,000. What? Yani mwifika mtu nyumbani mwana an 20k? 20k? Asha kuona, the things I never buy yuko Kenya na yu 20k. Ndi anawana wana buy yuko maju. Hey! Ruma ndi yu inaenda around. Terian an 20k. 20k na naishina wazungu. 20k maju. You get me? So now, like I was saying, I'm getting this 20k. It is my pocket money. Because the family knows very well. They have to do what? They have to pay my medical bills if I'm sick. They have to give me a bed to sleep on, food to eat. They have to give me a ticket to go to, to my school. They have to pay for my school, which is language school, because I could not live here without not talking. We cannot talk with sign language. You know, you cannot be saying, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, because you can't speak German. It is a rule when you're taking a maid from third world country or from abroad overseas you have to take them to learn the language that is the only way you can communicate it's a part of the program is a rule there's no shortcut about it but some families if you find mean ones who just want to have your labor wata kufinyilia kwa zujui rules unajua uwe mekuja na agency agent alikufanya kila kitu au kusoma the rules au kusoma the regulations huli panda ndege ukenda maju like some of us you come here you don't know your rights my main thing here is to just save the lives of my sisters and brothers back at home because the hell some of us go through here or went through here 
and I mean to say, are afraid to tell you not to send your children here without thinking twice or thrice or researching properly or getting to know how they're going to survive is the pain that always touches me. And I've tried this with my own nieces and nephews, but I was kiangi. How was kiangi? They have to go into the pain themselves to start again. Then what hurts me most is that oh, you want them. You want them, 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 you want them. After warning them, she wants to be the hero herself. She doesn't want us to go. She wants, doesn't want us to live the way she lives. She doesn't want. Our do you kuishi kwa green trees? Nilifanya nini ile siku na choice ndo niishi kwa green tree. And this is what I'm trying to tell them. Na kutumia pesa, soma, graduate, fanya hivi. I'm sending them to my waishimiwa za wapatie job. Awaendi kwa hizo jobs, they want to come maju. Na ambia, I would love to be in Kenya myself. But I am too old to come back into somebody's house. I have to work. You, you are still accepted in my mother's house. You, you are still accepted in my auntie's house. You, you are still accepted in some, you can go to my cousin's house and live there. Yet they don't know what I'm going through. So I'm trying to save you from that. So, please, watch and lale now basi, na nyenye mpate jobs through them. Watch and lale now basi, na nyenye msikuje maju kusafa, msikuje maju for holiday. They don't listen. They don't listen. So I say to myself, if they want to come and experience themselves, let me do what? Let me teach other people. So I do it, even when they tell me to stop, I will do it and do it until somebody's life is saved. Because every month, every two months, you hear somebody commit suicide. Every month, you hear somebody commit suicide. Not that they want. It's because there's nobody to help them. They can't share their lives. And with social media, social media has made it, things even more tighter for them. Situation is more tighter for them. It's about bragging. It's about boasting your good life. It's about saying how you, you, you are, your parents are doing well. It's about showing how, how we've built your home. It's about showing how you have peleka tsihu maju. It's about the pressure is too high. Now, what wing you are lazy, even inviting people maju, even me as I speak to you, I still can't invite anybody here maju. Lakini mtu anakupatia pressure. Nime invite nani? Nime invite nani? Nime invite nani? Na ujui, nani amemsaidia ku invite huyo mtu? You don't know who helped her to invite that person to come to Maju. There's rules and there's a kind of money that you have to have in your account and a kind of money you have to earn every month to be able to invite even your mother Maju. Now that pressure is killing many girls out here because they feel, they're thinking they're failures. They're thinking they have failed in life because they've never invited their father's Maju. They're thinking they've failed because their sisters are still at home. And not even that, their own parents back at home are feeling like their kids have failed Maju because the neighbor's kids are going maju. The neighbor's kids are flying. Gee, who, whose daughter has already brought, taken all the, 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 the neighborhood to, to, the, to abroad? And my daughter has never taken us abroad. My, my daughter has never taken my brother's children abroad. My daughter has never taken uh, the church members abroad. My children, my daughter. So your mother has pressure. They're innocently having pressure because you're not telling her what you're telling her. Or you try to reach her, but then you're stopped by your sisters or your friend telling you that you'll give her a heart attack if you tell her. So your mother is talking innocently. Your sisters know the, what the situation is, but they don't want to tell either you or, you know, they don't want to be the gap between, you know, to talk. You know, your mother gave birth to you. Your father also contributed to giving birth to you. They should be able to know when you're suffering. You should not be ashamed of telling them how life is, what things are. And if they don't want to listen, then tell it to us. Tell it to the public. It will reach them. If you tell us, it will reach them. Instead of dying here, because you can, you have nobody to speak to. And me, I will always speak for, for my sisters and brothers abroad. Even themselves, those who are suffering, who don't want to be talked on behalf, I will talk for you. 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 Because I see these things one of one. I've been here for this, my going to 17th year. And I've seen fire. Not fire on my side only, but fire, even worse fire on your sides. The way you see me speaking, my heart is in my mouth, in my tongue. I've prayed about it. 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 I've prayed Yani, I'm a lawyer, I'm a diaspora lawyer, I'm an internet lawyer, I'm an entertainment lawyer, I'm a lawyer without pay. 
I am a lawyer who is fought he who is fought 24 hours a day. Like yesterday, I posted a song that is my song just because my phone that I used to send M-Pesa to pay the guitarist and everything on that song those days is kaput, is spoiled. And just because it's been years, people have struggled for, people have put my own electricity and all my time on, are still thinking they can bully me to death. I place a song on YouTube that has nothing to do with anybody else except me. It's about me. It's my biography. It's me. A song that I didn't even force anybody to sing. A song that I spent even money on. Lakini like because nobody was there to see that this money has been sent. We just send money without even accounting for it. Without even putting records. Without The way we send money. And then after you send somebody money, then they start... Oh, I didn't beg you for, you didn't send me. There's no way you can defend yourself because you have no proof. Another kubuli nayo. Kubuli nayo. There's nothing, not even a single cent you're earning from this thing. Nothing. Somebody thinks this whole house was built with YouTube. I earn no single cent from YouTube. Nothing. Not even Facebook. I earn zero. Zero, 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 zero. And people have worked hard for. They are all now just doing, look at, look at them. They are... They are, they are queen, they have become kings and queens. They are up there. Now, Mimi, I am still in the same spot. Yeah? Now, but I'm going to talk fight. Yeah, what you know, you know, you Mimi. Mimi, Rodney, Mimi, Kurogwa Gani. But you know what? It doesn't stop me from preaching and from, from continuing to promote my, the music and to dance when I want and not to dance when I want. I will still do it. I will always do it. Because I know. Maybe, not even maybe, I know I'm alive and still in that white kitchen. I'm still sitting out here. I'm still in this peaceful area in this Maju. I can still uh, 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 you know, afford to come to Kenya and travel around because of what I do. It's not always just about money. Some people can earn from YouTube. Some people can earn from wherever. Some people can be given awards. Some people can get those are free mass. But me, I am healthy. I can eat. I, don't, yani, I can sleep peacefully. I have all this fresh air out here. I don't live in an apartment. I live in my own house. You know? So these are my blessings already. So even if I don't have anything, any, anybody appreciating me, God appreciates me and that is why I'm here. Because I believe if I didn't do what I was doing, if I don't do what, I, what I'm doing, this mission that I'm going about, I'd be maybe, maybe homeless, or I'd be dead, or I'd be somewhere in Thimlish in Kenya, married uh, the eighth wife, or I'd be, this is, this is my payment. This is my payment. You see this piece I'm having here? This is my payment. Okay? Well, if you see other people, what they're posting for you, they, they're struggling in apartments, they're struggling in, in, in crowded areas, and me, I'm so peaceful. In, I'm talking in this whole community alone. You know? So, it's not always about money, cash money. Some money are invested in people in another way. God will give you the perfect person to take care of you. God will give you good friends god will always like you tell you to block this one gives you fresh ones like the friends i used to have before i don't have them anymore but i have better friends better thinking friends even if you check my friends list here on facebook you will see people like karo radul malak dutch nyomindi uh nani nani uh, melicha Mel 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 you see uh, you know you see you see scholars you see people like um Ashura, 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 Michael, who is uh, the the president, or the president or the speaker of the Iala. You, I, nowadays my wall, my page, I interact with people who can take me up, people who can teach me this. You see aspiring politicians, you see politicians, you see doctors, you see professors, you see lecturers. Before you'd come to my wall, you'll find Yane Jomawala, Mawalas, Ogandawala, Waka Waka. Waka waka, waka waka. Nowadays you find teachers who are, uh, you know, t t Kenyan, Kenyans who are abroad and are teachers in high school. Like Ziva Nyasuba, a teacher in Paris, not in Paris, in Leo, a high school teacher, teaching English and, and sciences. You find in England, I have a friend called, um, called um, Nyanaya Kombewa. Her, I think now she calls herself Lady, Lady Albert, a teacher, a teacher, a scholar. When you listen to her English, you say, you know, this is the person who can 
what they talk they talk maturely they tell you that you know what don't limit yourself you look at them even without even talking to them you look at them and say now this is what i want to be this is what i want to be this is what i want to be you look at uh, this pilot sister of mine who is a doctor like i already mentioned her you look at leah reddish a doctor a, an author you look at uh, lizzie 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 ngonga a, a, a signed nurse like just graduated yesterday you look at nani who else you look at uh, so many there's so many back and i confused wako wengi is when my eyes are opening and saying kenyans wako hapa maju not even maju just a hapa europe hata hapa germany kenyans wa maana kenyans wa maana there's one here in lubeck just close to me a guy who is a professor huh is when i even realize that the daughter of, of nani is here the daughter of fibia sio is a doctor here surely when kidoma you just to think hapa to kutunza my friends kufika member kufanya escort jobs which is not wrong that is your life if you want to do it but you people you have to evaluate your friends when god takes some friends out of your life there's a reason why there's a reason why maybe they've already learned what they wanted to learn from you the, their mission in your life their, their their spot in your life is done with so even if they were best of your friends cut them out if they're blocking you from from moving ahead get them out of your way They've already gotten the help they needed to get from you. You've already gotten the help you needed to get from them. So let them go. Mimi, I block daily. I can be your best friend today. But when I realize you are backstabbing me or you are on a mission to destroy me, sutina kufunga, nje, out of my way. Because as you see here, outside the camera, I am living alone. So who are you on the internet to, to like want to control my life, want to, 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 to steer my life as a driver? Who? Who are you? Nikifunga internet, the what i how i go about my life you don't know you can see my sisters are my trees here and my uh, uh rabbits there and and my garage and uh, the people who love me who live with me here in my is here and my uh, fellow gardener eh? when i start cutting my grass here or when i go play tennis but there i play tennis eh? with my sister pauline eh? who, where are you where are you then so Talk the way you want to talk, deal with whatever you want to do, but my life is not stopping. And when I, time comes for me to come to the internet to speak, I will come and speak whether you kiss me or you deck me. So we go on with this topic we are, we are talking about. I keep stopping. You know, I always feel so touched when I see my diaspora and sisters with me here. I really appreciate you guys. Let's grow together. Let's, it's, not about, it's just about living life happily and living longer. Sistoria Pesa. Whoever wants to support me money wise, I appreciate you support me and I say thank you. But I don't ask you to give me money. I just ask you to listen and share the message. You don't have to share my video. Take that message from my mouth. Try to make it the way your people can understand it and make it further. If they don't agree, then you can tell them, okay, let me show you this girl who also talks about these things. I allow you to use my words to teach other people. As long as to stop this suffering, to stop our people our sisters because those kids these black children th these are our kenyan sisters and our ugandan sisters east african sisters ni wetu you can hate one another on the internet but when you come to reality here it is your sister like now if you go up the street here just just my house come out of the gate and then you go i've shown you the gate in some post before on the street up there's a sudanese guy who is uh, making a fence for a for a, a new family who've just moved in bought a house on that line that sudanese guy I was passing there with Pauline on Saturday and I saw him. He was, uh, then I said hi. And then he, he gets, he just, things just changed in her, in him. And he stopped working and he came to talk to me on the fence. Meanwhile, his boss, the wife and the cousins were out there. They were making a barbecue out there. The guy talked to me and because these people who have employed him knew, know me, they know me because I'm a neighbor. They know, see me walking every day up and down or driving up and down. They didn't, they didn't even dare even tell him anything. We talked and talked and talked and talked. At last, we became all friends. Mbaka, when I was leaving that place, it was time for dinner. They told the guy to go and sit with them and eat with them. Some respect came in. Because they do respect me for who I am here. But then, on the other side, they are, they are not seeing the value of those other people. Because they are, you know, what Tangina are two friends. Ukata two friends. But from that talk, me and that guy, and he told me he's an actually from Sudan, which I am also because I am an actually descent. So this thing brought us together, yeah? And uh, it gave him some respect with that employer. And that makes me happy because he's my brother. I can't go up at Naringa na Wazungu, na brother Yangu. Even if you want to say he's, he's, he's not my, my, mama, my mother's son, but he's my brother. We come from the same place and we all have the mission to work hard and go back to the same, same place. 
who knows maybe he's a doctor or he's a professor somewhere or he has some pieces of land somewhere he'll come and help me one day or his children you know so i'm only struggling for my sisters and brothers najum na kuanga na drama in real life sometimes lakini all the same we just want i just want to tell you that mimi na wapenda and i will never value amzungu over you let's fight on the internet do what do what do what but i will never value amzungu over you that is what i'm teaching you especially you young people hmm? drama nayo na ogopa hii kuvisitiana visiting people visiting people what my stories naanza nini nini because not everybody has always things like me you know you can open your doors for people and then they go and turn things upside down so like i was saying i was still on uh, kids and pregnancy yeah so the burden of the burden of having children abroad so now you can't afford an au pair yeah cuz maybe you're not working if you're working the money you're earning cannot afford to have an au pair because like i said you have to pay for them their their tickets to school you have to pay their fees you have to do, you have to do a lot of things for them for a whole year and it's not a guarantee that they'll stay with you some of them run away umeka mtu umeka mtu umemtoa mag wow you've paid for somebody air ticket you've gone to the embassies to to look to make uh, like those signatures for them you've gone to the immigration in germany you've taken all your private documents to the immigration so that you can invite a stranger to come and live with you once they fika hapa they are concentrating on looking for boyfriends because the neighbors or their friends on the internet have told them hapa you have to have a boyfriend you have to get pregnant faster so instead of this girl focusing on or not brought him brought her to your house or even talking to you telling you okay uh mommy i'm your maid yes i'm your au pair i love the way i'm living with you but i have i don't want to go back home yeah when my au pair mission with you ends i don't want to go back home hmm? so would you help me after this instead of using these months these first months that you arrive in germany or you arrive in europe to talk with the people who brought you to their house i didn't know this you know i didn't know so that is why i'm trying to teach you now that i know they have invited you as a stranger to their house they have taken you from the airport with love they have brought you home they've given you a bed to sleep in they've given you food to eat why don't you speak to them tell them i've been after one month that is his mom and dad eh this is how it is um i don't want to go back home and i've heard that uh, girls can stay here there is a way that people can study here there is a way that people can do social work here i've already seen that on the internet because definitely you've seen it before you come so could you people help me so that when i'm my au pair here with you people ends i don't have to go back home so that i can get this social here or i can go and study or something if you speak to them i swear to you they will help you but if you don't know you are living with them but you are you are you are you keep escaping like i used to escape to go and talk to kenyans kenyans will not love to you to be with in that house because they've suffered also or they're still suffering and they can't ac- accept the fact that you are living a good life with amzungu they can't and some of the kenyans who have lived with azungus and then they their 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 lifestyles i mean their their relationships have, have hit rocks have failed they don't like to see another kenyan being blessed with amzungu it is something that that is there they will convince you to go and marry a nigerian they'll convince you to get a boyfriend who is a nigerian they just don't want you kuwashinda hawatakangi washinde hata ukuje mwambie nimepata boyfriend mzungu na yako na nigeria aiya mungu atakata takwambia ah huyezi kumari huyo mmm bila nimemwona hivyo haizi kumari or atakwambia umu introduce alafu atamchukua atampatia ta sister yake you know what is happening so you umeeka hapo ukumbuke mungu trust god mwambie god god you are the one who brought me here I've landed in this strange country. These strange people have taken me into their house. I've already lived one month and I just feel okay. They even shop for me. They they eat, they eat with me, they travel with me. Why can't you help me share with them what my my endeavors are, what my my future plans are? Let me try in case they don't help me, then I can look for other 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 other, other routes. Open for me other routes. You po- I didn't know this. I didn't know. I didn't know. But because God knew I was very innocent, that is why I'm sitting here today. Otherwise zile deposition nilikuwa nimeplaniwa nime, nime the deposition so I'd be in Kenya now me I'd be dead in two maybe ningekufia 2007 elections huko ndo ningekufia 2011 and 7 huko 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 ndo ningekufa i'm sure huko ndo ningekufa but god knew this one this one is innocent this one is innocent i'll try to save her i'll try to save her so that she teaches other people so now talk tell your host mother that i'm seeing people like Terry chocolate yeah they came as opera but they're still here There's something they did that you can also help me do. If you are clever enough you come with your certificates. Kuja na certificates zako. Don't just come from form 4 and you come to Germany. Try and get a degree. Or get just at least get a degree. 
get just that one degree or diploma, but from a, a good institution, like Nairobi University, Kenyatta University, uh, these universities, real ones, that can be recognized. When you talk Google, da 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 da, in a patikana. Since you listen, you better know. You go see what you go carry a call. You go done in done a pana. The one that you put on Google and immediately the website comes out. Get from there. Carry those certificates with you. If you have even enough time, like I'm talking to you now, I'm telling you. As you study German, instead of in the Tao, go to the institute to study German or study French at Alliance Francaise, or you're going to, to do your SATs and, and uh, whatever those things you do, TOEFL. Please look for somebody to translate your documents. Translate your documents. If you're not going to England or you're not going to America, you're going to Sweden or, or, or Finland or Norway or Germany or Belgium or Netherlands. Translate your documents. There are people who are professionals. Ask at the language school. They know. Go to institute. They have all those informations. Or go to your embassy or write them an email. Ask them. Who do you know that are accredited and uh, can translate my documents? They will tell you. They'll give you addresses. There are very many in town in Nairobi or wherever, everywhere. Go translate your certificates and you get an original stamp. Translating into that language that you that you need to, to translate it into. Then go and approve them. Take them to the embassy. Just make an appointment. Embassies are just not for visas alone. They're not just for visas alone. What do they need? Embassy to near visa pekeake. Apana. You can also just call an embassy and tell them, I'm planning, I'm planning on going to your country. I want my certificates approved now before I leave. And if you know you're coming to get married, if you know you, you're coming to get married, your boyfriend, you already had degrees and everything, now you're coming to get married. Try and get certificate of impediment to marriage early enough. Go to Sharia house and let, ask them to prove that you have not been married so that you carry that thing with you in case corona gives you a close down. Tell them to give you a, a certificate of good conduct from police station so that when you reach here, you're not in Mata, my sisters. Ukuje kama uku already na vitu, uko na files, instead of beba siyo roiko na, na kitungu na nini, which roiko is even sweet, delicious, but not so healthy. Fill that space with files. Put your documents in them, and some of those copies live with your mother and father, or somebody you trust, that wata nyumei kichomeka huku, ama ndege yanguke, your documents are safe. Carry them ready. When you reach here, and you see kuna ways and ways, you talk to your, your family, they tell you this and this, or you, when you're free in the house, you research, you research, you listen to YouTube videos about immigration in Australia, about what, what you look at your papers, and my immigration things are good for Australia, because I'm now in Germany, and I still have seven, eight months to go. Can I manage to go to America? Can I manage to go to Australia? And if I can't, can I do something in Germany to make me waste that time a little bit so that I can prepare to go to Australia? Because Australians are taking people be below 35 who are professionals. And I'm a professional. Can I go to Sweden? What about the language? This language in German is very difficult. I don't want to stay here. Can I go to France? Can I go to Belgium? Yeah, can I do this? You, you compare with your papers. You're busy in the house. You're busy in your bedroom. Not watching Nigerian movies. You're busy. Because we did come to this life to sleep. Sleep is waiting for us inside the grave, you guys. I took up a holiday. We are not in this world on holiday. If you are sleeping now and you're watching me, you are on the wrong place. We are not here for holiday. Life is about work. It's crying, it's smiling, it's running, it's jumping, it's keeping fit, it's eating, it's doing what is doing what. Just give me a minute. Let me, t let me pick that call. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, guys. <laughs> so, um, what was I saying again? The phone distracted me, but uh, I was just on telling my younger sisters and brothers who are out there that hmm, don't hurry getting kids, okay? Don't hurry getting pregnant. Don't hurry getting children. Even you who are still in Kenya, school children, school girls, university students, form fours. There's no hurry with getting children. Getting children is a lot of responsibility. Even if your mother loves you and you take care of your children, there's a time when your mother will not take care of your children. You have to take care of your children yourself. And it will distract a lot from you. Live your life first. Um, accumulate something for yourself. Make a home. Find a good husband or a good father for your child the one be before you get you give that back to that child get a man a man who really loves you truly who is ready to really take care of that child who has enough finances to be able to finance your child yani try to to maximize this opportunity of being young you have until 40 though 40 is too late to get a child but who says people get even children with 50 if you want and in this generation 2020 you don't have to have a child so you adopt and if you have to have your blood, wait, wait, wait. But if you can afford to have your child and you know it can be taken care of very well, and then you go on with your life, 
then it's better. But I promise you, if you have a baby from your blood, there's no way you'll be comfortable somewhere enjoying life and your baby is somewhere else. That you are now want to go and study and your baby is with somebody else. It is torturing. It is torturing. You can't. So you better finish up that part first. At least get up to a you know, postgraduate degree or you just start even a master's. Or at least just get up there where you can be stable. Where somebody can say, this one I can employ. Nowadays people are going to pitch PhDs even as we want to struggle get there. We, we are just praying for. We didn't manage to because we were not told. Now I'm seeing younger girls, younger than me, 31, 25, having masters, still having what? I feel bad because I'm capable, but nobody told me at the right time. So now you just feel it's late, kind of. Yet I'm still working towards it. So I'm telling you who has the chance to do it. Maximize all these things. There are a lot of scholarships on the internet. A scholarships ni mingi. And these scholarships, everybody can get them. Even you who got a D, you can get it. You know how? You can volunteer to work somewhere through an organization. And then through these organizations, your work there, what you do there, how you learn, how you are ready to learn, how you are working with these people, they can give you scholarship to do something, to do nursing, scholarship to do this. You can volunteer in this, what do you call them, um, uh, fellowships. There are a lot of things called fellowships. Like in a Bill Gates, they organize for Africa. All these rich people are brought, these ones you see in Obama, in a super, super bag. They bring these things to Africa. They have all these, all this, their scholarships do not come to, to, to Kenya, to, to Germany, to England, where they go to Africa. If you don't know, you won't know. Go to their website, Skina Big Gates, Skina Zuckerberg, Facebook, Instagram. Not Instagram to go and, and, and put your clothes and show your breasts. Instagram to check on their foundation, to check on what they're doing with Africa. Go for TikTok, check what TikTok is doing in Africa, not what TikTok is doing with, with ASEAN. You will find their scholarships. Go to DAAD, Deutsche Akademische Austauschdienst. Uh, they have scholarships. In, in Nairobi, they have offices. Walk, write embassies, write Canadian embassy, write American embassy, not to ask them for visa, to ask them for scholarships. Tell them, uh, I'm this girl, a girl, I studied here and here, I learned this and this, I don't have money, I'd like to study this and this. You never know. But when you back to the scholarship, they apply. Check every website of every embassy of this country, you'll find where the scholarships you'll find. I look for them all the time and I send them to the people who I send to, who most even don't even, don't, don't even follow them up. Only a few does follow. Hmm? Even these groups that are starting now, like these African leaders, I see Terian Shebet posting scholarships every day. Who checks them? I'm talking to my sisters and brothers at Yani, my, those ones, those ones who, who I see asking for, 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 for websites to look for men. They can look for them, but they also need to know that their life is their life and they need to to maximize their life and opportunities first and enjoy. So that when they sit down to have a child, then they can say, ah, ataka mwa mtuwa minifungia kwa inyumba, yenye nisha enjoy maisha yangu. Yenyewe, I have papers. Yenye, I have re read books. Yenye, I have danced. Yenye, I have traveled. Vandalust hivi, ni me vandalust. Yenyewe, you know, you've enjoyed, you've maximi maximized your life. Because life is also not just, not just about reading, not just about doing what. Life is also about living your life and getting satisfied before you give your life to somebody else. Because having a child is giving your life to that child for some years. Not even some years. Your child is your child until you, you, you grow, until you die. People who leave their children, even who are now married, that now you, you are big, you are now older than me, now you can stay, I don't care about you. They are not parents. A parent gives birth and you must know that your child is your child forever until they die. So even if they are married and they have problems with their husbands and, and their, their in-laws, when they talk to you, you should be able to be there for them. Because it's your child. They didn't apply for you to give birth to them. That is why also you, before you give birth to a child, know that your child has not applied for you to get married, to, to, get, to give birth to them. When you give birth to them, you have to take care of them completely. Mbaka muisho. It's a journey, a journey that's never ending, a journey that has smiles and a journey that has crying also. Okay? That is what I'm trying to say. Please, just listen. Take what is good and the rest that you think are not clear for you, just leave them, sieve them out. But my message is, young girls, there's no hurry in getting married and getting pregnant. There's no hurry. Okay? God is with you. Pray and focus. And Accept yourself and love yourself. You know, protect yourself. And kwa kakita kusaidia, muambia kusaidia na kuda shule. Muambia kusaidia kufanya nini, kutravel abroad. Muambia kusaidia kuenda kufanya hata nini social work maju. But not kuenda kuwa mare dama kuenda kushika member. That's the last option. Hmm? That's all.
on, on also when your child will be happy with you one day when you give birth to them say hey mama angu, my mother did this and did this and did this and struggled so we don't have to depend only on our father hmm? because these fathers and even these mothers us everybody can die all of us can die anytime you don't want your child to be hanging over there because they depend on only one parent here it is your responsibility and especially my my people here maju if you're coming tomorrow if you're coming next year if you're waiting for your visa come to do what brought you even if you come getting married if, if a husband is bringing you don't hurry to get pregnant being married is an advantage for you also because you can now explore many other things you can struggle to, you can apply for, for for studies you can apply for a job you can do nursing and go and work in switzerland switzerland they're paying very well so people study nursing here and then they move to switzerland they pay so well then after you've gotten your job and you're now working earning your your, your millions then you can start work you can now start uh, looking for children Hata kama mekuwacha, amesema ulikata kumzalia, utapata nao the right person, the one God is giving you. Hatuki wambua hizi bitu. We were not told. I'm just helping you from my heart and soul. I'm trying to teach you. Children are a burden. A good burden. Needs mature souls. Need ready souls. Needs you to be there for them. Achana nayo for now, if you're young. Achana nayo. And if you're older and you don't have, usikwe under pressure, there's nothing you're losing not having a child. Children are many in this in this world. There is enough. There is enough. Even Bill Gates wants to reduce population. Don't feel guilty if you don't have a child. Don't feel guilty. Even if you just don't have it because you are you want to enjoy your life. I beg, it's your life. Because look, if you have that child, eh? one day when you're old, you give them the burden of taking care of you. Hmm? you you're giving birth to your child, yet you're giving birth to, to your child to, to take care of you, to, to, to give them more work. Yet, instead of giving them their life to live their, on their own. Hmm? Ukikufa, wanatafutwa. Ukiwa na debts, wanatafutwa. Ukiwa na nini, mtu wako wanatafutwa. You want to give somebody else a whole problem. So then you die alone. You stay alone and die alone. And then you give nobody problems. It's only you and you alone. Once you've been buried, nobody is having pressures because of you. Hmm? But now if you're sitting there and you're thinking, now I have children, yeah? Hey, if I don't build them a home, where will they go? Where will, we, where will, be, will they be running to when I leave this country and go back to Kenya? Hmm? When I die now in this country, Will they have to come and, and, and pay for my grave? Will they come and have to, to dig my garden? Will they have to, 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 to take care of me in the hospital? Will they have to... You know, there are a lot of questions. The sun is shining so much. Eh? There are a lot of questions. Hmm? So, may God bless you guys. I have to go now. I have an appointment. And I love you guys. Subscribe. But most of all, share the message with your people. In Jesus' holy name I pray. It's a finished business.